Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. The internal fights in Kenya Kwanza government pitting William Ruto on one side, regarding on the other side, seems to be getting more intense as Gen Z piles pressure on Ruto. Earlier today, regarding the Shago was in Nyeri County, Madeira constituency, where he accused some government officials of trying to undermine him. And he went further to state he's ready to lose his job as the deputy president. That's regarding the Shago. Let's have a look at the story as captured by Nation for it's going to inform the basis of our analysis right now. Stop sabotaging war on alcohol. D.B. Gashagwa tells Madira MP Eric Wamumbi the ongoing multi-agency fight against alcoholism in Madira, Nyeri County has taken a new political turn with the Deputy President regarding Gashagwa accusing the area member of Parliament Eric Wamumbi of issuing illegal instructions. He said the MP's directive to reopen bars was part of a wider political plot to undermine him. This comes barely a week after more than 400 bars were reopened, reportedly at the behest of the area legislator, who told bar owners during a meeting that he had spoken to some higher authorities who had given him the go-ahead to help them. Hundreds of bars in Madeira have closed in the past four months as the government has stepped up its fight against alcoholism in the country. While speaking at Kiamariga Market during a service at Pepper Church, a walking distance from his village of Wamunyoro on Sunday, July 7, Mr. Gashawa took on Mr. Wamumbi, his political ally turned enemy, accusing him of sabotaging his fight against alcoholism. It is unbelievable that a person I assisted to win the Madeira parliamentary seat has now turned against me. How can he give instructions to security agencies to reopen bars? Let me tell them that whatever instructions he gave are illegal and I am not aware of any cabinet decision to reopen bus in the area, he said. Mr. Gashago accused Mr. Wamumbi of lying to the bar owners that he had talked to some higher authorities who gave him the go-ahead to assist them. Those instructions are illegal and are part of political schemes that are going on in this country those schemes are destroying the country and I would like to tell those behind them to stop it, he said. I am prepared to lose my job as deputy president if it means saving our nation from this menace. I was not born in the position of deputy president. I only recently got it. It is not a must that I remain there forever. Leading a nation of drunkards is no honor, he said. So Rigadi is saying he's ready to lose his job. He wants people from the mountain to be sober. And he's now accusing his area member of parliament, that's Madeira MP, of trying to be used to fight him. That's Rigadi Ashagwa. So it's clear, Rigadi has lost his power in the government. There are higher powers that are now controlling instruments of power, and most so the security organs in his backyard of Nyeri County. Rigadi is now just a shell of his former self. I want us to put all this into perspective for Kenyans to understand what all this means and why I strongly believe William Ruto laid out a trap for Rigadi and Rigadi gladly, willingly snared himself 
And right now, he's facing the consequences. Kenyans should not sympathize with him. Kenyans should not mourn regarding. Before we do that, if you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give the video a like. Let's proceed. Yes. The closing of bars on the mountain was a trap William Ruto laid out for Rigadi. Rigadi unknowingly but willingly snared himself. So he should not be sympathized with. He should not be mourned. He speared himself with his own spear. You don't just wake up and you decide to close businesses that you are fighting illegal brews. It doesn't happen that way because a wholesome closing of bars or businesses is something that obviously cannot overwhelm with the people because there are some legit businesses going on and there are also illegitimate businesses going on. If you hold something, closes them down, then you are affecting even the legit businesses that are in operation. So the first blunder Rigadi made was to hold somebody close all the bars on the mountain. And that rendered thousands of Mount Kenya residents jobless. There were people who were benefiting directly or indirectly from those businesses. And in our past analysis, we did highlight on those. And we also saw that some business owners on the mountain, most of these ones dealing in Bruce, came out and stated very clearly that those who are selling illicit Bruce on the mountain were people very close to Rigadi Ashagwa and Kenya Kwanza government. And that those individuals were the ones who funded order in 2022. And they went further to expose that one was arrested, but a call came from Rigadi Ashagwa's office, and that illicit Bruce Allen was left scot free. So, as Rigadi Ashagwa was pushing for businesses to be closed on the mountain, his close associates were the ones selling illicit Bruce. Thus, according to business owners on the mountain, and according to those who are in the norm on what is happening as per the illicit brews being sold on the mountain. So regarding crossing the illicit brews was not a solution because the people knew that some of his allies were the ones selling those illicit brews. That was a trap route laid for him and he snared himself. Now, that same trap is being used against him. Madeira, member of parliament, now turned regard this form, is now re-engineering the opening of the businesses and regard is against that. The, your guess can be as good as mine that people will side with the member of parliament because that's their source of income. One bad business for those who understand these things do support several people. Those are social joints where people do meet. And if you ban them, you are curtailing the socialization of those people. So from where I sit, this is a war regarding a sharp one has already lost. And he lost it because he never saw it as a trap. He thought William Ruto was there to support him. Ruto had looked at the bigger picture. He knew he was setting up Rigadi Echagwan. Rigadi never saw that. And Rigadi will lose in this war. William Ruto also set Rigadi Echagwan against the opposition leaders and against Kenyans. During last year's demonstrations, we could see Rigadi Echagwan waking up very early in the morning, going to organize the police on how to be brutal on the innocent opposition demonstrators. And because of that alone, 
I don't think any Sen opposition supporter or any Sen opposition leader can support or sympathize with the regarding. He was the face of brutality in Ruto's government during last year's opposition's demonstrations. And we also still remember what happened at Uhuru Kenyatta's Northlands farm. Fingers are being pointed towards the Gavi's office. That was another trap Ruto laid out for him, and he unknowingly but willingly smeared himself. Right now, he has started seeing the repercussions Rigadi should not be sympathized with. And what now William Ruto should do is to bring an impeachment motion against Rigadi Gashagwa. Let this man go home. We can't have a deputy president who anytime he opens his mouth, he's talking of what was Murima. He's talking of a shareholding government. Those are politics of yesteryears, politics that cannot be entertained in 2024. Regardi and his allies should be shown the door. In fact, they should be placed where they belong, him and his supporters. They are a big embarrassment to this country. Uru Kenyatta did give a warning. They never listened. We are told, as if foundation na mamake, ufunzwa na ulimwengu. The world is now out to teach regarding the Shagwa hard lessons. Let me stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give the video a like. Any person watching us outside Kenya, drop a comment, let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. If possible, subscribe, give the video a like. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya.